Good morning and welcome to TV XYZ News in Brief. This morning, National Security Minister's name missing from President Akufuado's cabinet list presented to Parliament yesterday and that's raising concerns. And also, Bank of Ghana snaps Parliament's invitation to assist investigations into the collapse of Dr. Akufi Amwabin's UT and Dr. Dufour's Unibank. NDC marks 29th anniversary which renewed call on members to join forces to safeguard Ghana's democracy and government justifies deal for overpriced uh, vaccines. But WHO is very worried. We'll be telling you why in a bit. I am PSA Okra. Government has finally given a breakdown of monies raised from the COVID-19 testing exercise at the Kotoka International Airport. Minister for Transport, Kwekwe Siyama, who was summoned by Minority Leader Haruna Idrisu yesterday, told Parliament a total of $17.3 million was realized between September and December 2020. Given a breakdown of the distribution, he said $16.2 million of the money was retained by Frontiers Health Services, while the Ghana Airport Company received a paltry $1.1 million. The minister explained that the contract between the Ghana Airport Company and Frontiers Health Services stipulated a ratio of $10 to $140 out of the $150 testing fee. Mr. Speaker, it is interesting to, to inform this August House that between September and December 2020, the total amount realized from the COVID-19 testing at the Kotoka International Airport was... $359,500. As per the concession agreement, as stated earlier, Frontier Health Services retained $16,202,200 for its services from September to, this, to December 2020. The Ghana Airport Company Limited, on the other hand, received $1,000,000. $157,300 for the same period as royalties accruing for COVID-19. And you heard Transport Minister Kweku Esiama. Let's stay a little bit in the health sector. The Ministry of Health has justified the overpriced Sputnik V vaccines. It says it had no alternative and will soon begin taking delivery of consignment based on Ghana's storage space. The Norwegian newspaper which first blew the whistle was described as a tabloid, but the editor in charge says he did all the necessary background checks and believed there are begging questions. The Finance Minister, Ken Foyata, who, who gives a reason for why Ghana would accept such a deal even at an overpriced range. Like I ask him, do you consider it a reasonable deal? And he says, I don't know, but you're left in a situation where the good guys in the West aren't giving you vaccines. You have lives to save. What do you do? It's easy to sit like, yeah, sit somewhere else. But the health ministry is justifying the deal, claiming it rather did good service during negotiations with middlemen from a higher price to $19. An 11-point statement issued by Chief Director of the Ministry, Kwabna Buedu Okun Afari, said, among other things, that one, Contact with the Russian government, Ghanaians abroad, and companies for the supply of Sputnik V vaccines proved futile. Two, that it is true that the middleman, Dalmuk Al Matum, an Emirati mentioned by the Norwegian newspaper indeed, had been awarded a contract to supply 300,000 doses for $5.7 million dollars. But the consignment is yet to be delivered. Again, that the agreement includes an option to pull out of the deal. Three, that the $10 per dose is an X factory price obtained in government to government deal. And since Ghana could not strike any of such deals, it had to resort to an open market where the contract in question was able to beat the price down from $25 to $19 per dose. It concluded that the health ministry has since placed batch orders for quantities based on national need and storage capacity. Meanwhile, the minority in parliament says the response smacks 
of a well-planned escape route. Ranking member on Parliament's Health Committee, Kobna Menta Akwando, says the decision to sign $19 per dose without resorting to Parliament, which has approved only $10 per dose, raises more questions. We have spent about 19 billion Ghana cities as far as COVID-19 is concerned. And during the budget estimate, the minister responsible for health couldn't account for even one billion. All they could do was to account for 600 million Ghana cities. And up till now, we don't know where the more than 19 billion Ghana cities went to. Ghana has so far vaccinated less than 900,000 of the over 15 million adult population. 90% of the doses used were mostly COVAX sponsored AstraZeneca vaccines, which were donated for free. There are no clear timelines yet on when Ghana is receiving large quantities of the vaccines for mass nationwide vaccination exercise. And the World Health Organization is worried about the development and it has been speaking to concerns about cartel exploiting the pandemic. The advice of WHO is that the countries use vaccines that are, have received emergency use listing by WHO, which are now eight vaccines. Second, we have received concerns from countries, not only your, your site in the, the Gamalia vaccine right now, the Sputnik, but we have received similar concerns regarding other vaccines uh, in, uh, with intermediates selling it at a much higher price than, than what is being actually sold by the manufacturers. Two things of, of, to be aware of. First of all, there is that the, the vast majority of manufacturers are selling only to public entities, right? So they are selling or to the international procurers, which is in this case of the COVID vaccines, is COVAX and uh, to, uh, to the procurement agencies, UNICEF and, and PAHO. Uh, the other thing to be taken into account. So what we, we, had, we have advised back to countries and we, is to contact the manufacturer to make sure that uh, the intermediate is, is legal, right? Because there is also the other side of this, because it's the, there's a lot of uh, substandard and falsified COVID products being commercialized out there. So you need to know the providence, where, where is the procedence, where is the, this product coming from, who is selling, and whether it's registered and has it been listed by WHO. So there are several things that need to be taken into account into this. During the last World Health Assembly, now that ended last week, we did have a long discussion on, on substandard and falsified medicines and vaccines circulating in the market and the internet sales are the, the way that the, these procurers reach out to either individuals or governments. So our advice is check with the manufacturer, check the legality of the transaction, and then you make an informed decision. And please make sure that you're buying vaccines that are uh, certified by WHO. Let's continue the bulletin with how the NDC marked its 29th anniversary yesterday. The party which is re-strategizing its plans on how it lost the elections has intended to use the period to heal wounds and also honor party members who supported its efforts in the 2020 elections. Wisdom Hedejome has more in this report. <laughs> It was an emotional virtual ceremony that brought together the young and old, the cadets, founding members, national and regional executives, and emerging future leaders of a political party which has played a key role in entrenching the 1992 constitution and the development of the country in general. Though founding member, the late Jerry John Rawlings had not been active at NDC event few years before his death last year, his presence was still felt. General Secretary 
John's Nasidun Ketia in his address recounted how political opponent and the so-called elite then chastised Chairman Rawlings then when he mooted the idea for the 1992 constitution. He said the NDC since 1992 has facilitated significant policies that have transformed the nation. These include the District Assembly Common Fund, the GET Fund, which till date is facilitating major infrastructure projects in schools, transformation of the energy sector, major hospitals, establishment of new university, port expansion projects, among other several initiatives that have not only improved access but provided several opportunities to millions of Ghanaians. And I remember some elites in society describe the process as a constitution of butchers and uh, whatever, very unprintable terms. But we own those descriptions up. 2020 running mate. Professor Nana Jane Opokwajiman in a brief remark said, The NDC, which has come a long way, needs time for introspection to chart new strategies, including empowering the youth to recapture power. What must have kept them going was the vision of a prosperous, of a peaceful country. What is our own vision today? Definitely it has been a long walk. And I'd like to hope that, I'd like to believe that it's been longer than 29 years. And it will be much, much, much longer going forward. But a lot of it depends on how we are walking the talk today. That will give the younger generations the, the hope that yes, it is possible. National Chairman Samuel Ofusampofu said time to heal is now and recommended formal visit and recognition of the aged whose trial helped the party weather the storm. He also encouraged rank and file of the party to remain united and focused. Doff our hearts for our hard-working kids who braced the storm, went round, looked out for people to sign signatures as founding members of the party and brought the party into being. As we speak today, we've lost most of them and quite a number of them are very old and incapacitated. On this occasion, my plea is that let's look out for these heroes and heroines of the party. Wherever they are, let's visit them. Let's go and strengthen them. NDC was birthed out of the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, which ruled Ghana following the military coup d'etat on 31st December 1981, led by late Jerry Rawlings. The party has produced three presidents since 1992, J.J. Rawlings, the late Professor Evans Atamios, and John Dramani Mahama. Three flags were hoisted to commemorate the event. First was a revolutionary flag raised by Madame Rejoice Ahiable, a member of the 31st Movement and Ekeda. Next was the NDC flag, performed by National Chairman Samuel of Oswampofu. And the last was the Ghana flag hoisted by Professor Nana Jane Opoku Ajima. And that was a report from Wisdom Hedejome. We can only wish the NDC well in everything they are doing. Let's stay a little bit longer on politics and governance issues. Uh, the absence of National Security Minister Kandapa, names from the list of cabinet ministers presented to parliament yesterday is fueling suspicion and the constitution guarantees no less than 10 and no more than 19 cabinet members. And it appears President Akufado dropped him for portfolios handling one of his flagship programs. The cabinet of any government in Ghana is constituted in conformity with Article 76 1 of the 1902 Constitution of Ghana, which enjoins the president to have a cabinet of not less than 10 ministers and not more than 19. The list of nominees have been officially presented to parliament through the Speaker Alban Bagbing for approval. A careful study of the list indicates majority of those who formed the first cabinet have been maintained. They include Finance Minister Ken Oforiata, Foreign Affairs Minister Shelley Ayoko Bote, Defense Minister Dominic Nitiwu, Interior Minister Ambrose Derry, Attorney General Godfred Yabu Adami, Energy Minister 
Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe, Majority Leader, Osei Che Mensa Bonsu, Education Minister, Dr. Ya Osei Educhum, Samuel Abu Jinapo, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, former Deputy Chief of Staff, Francis Asenso Boache, now Minister for Works and Housing, and Mavis Hawakumsin, Minister for Fisheries. Missing in the new cabinet compared to those featured in 2017 are the Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Monitoring and Evaluation, Ministry of Regional Reorganization and Development, and the Ministry of Special Development Initiative. Let's move now to some other stories. The Jumakwe Enyan Esiam District Chief Executive is fighting attempts to deny him another term. He has been responding to a recent debut of chiefs of Kunyaku, which called on the president to sack him. Last week, chiefs and opinion leaders of Kunyaku, one of the big towns in the Ejumaku Enyan Isiam district, held a deba on the performance of the DCE and called on the president not to retain him. They enumerated a number of issues, including what they described as abysmal performance, leading to the deprivation in most communities of badly needed development projects. But the district chief executive, Emmanuel Ransford Kwesi Nyako, has hit back. He describes comments by the critics as sheer sabotage, an attempt by faceless persons using the chief to undermine him. He debunked the allegations leveled against him, insisting he has been very open, attend debates, and has influenced some projects contrary to the claims. He said, under his tenure, Several deplorable roads have been reshaped. Portable water extended to needy communities, while new cheap compounds have been built. He also said abandoned projects, including a Jumako Bosso teacher's bungalow, among others, have been completed. In some of our kind of being, there was the was my party chairman. He moved in the Kasai Namibwa. In some of the candidates, about the road. I mean, let me respond to that. Too. Rudy, you're by Abotre. You're by Ghana Highways. No cream. You're by Young Fan to Fum. You're called the Ardner Contractor Society. You're by three or four site meetings. You're in the Mumbri and Kanka Oboba Mountain. You're in the Mumbri and Kanka Oboba Mountain. You're in the But you're in the Mumbri and when you're in the Mumbri and you're in the Mumbri and you're in the Mumbri and you're in the as he, sees. he said while he is reluctant to be engaging the chiefs in public, it's also appropriate that he set the record straight. The DCE appealed for calm and said his doors are still open for dialogue to reach consensus on priority projects in the district. And before we go, the Bank of Ghana has snubbed Parliament's invitation to assist investigations about how UT Bank and Unibank was collapsed. And this is how we end the news. Always log on to myxyzonline.com for more news. I am PSC Okra, and I'll back to Erika Hianyong.